Hi, and welcome to Salem Covenant Church. My name is Brandon, and I'm the administrator here at Salem. Thank you for tuning in and checking out our church. We really appreciate your time and attention this morning. Let me give you a quick snapshot of what we are all about here at Salem. We are here to help you encounter God, to equip people, and to extend the gospel. If you're a member at Salem, if you've been coming for a while, or if this is your first time and you're looking for more info about the church, visit our website at salemcovenant.org. We're also on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So for weekly content and encouragement, follow us there. Another way to stay connected with us here and grow in your walk with Jesus is to join a grace group. Grace groups are small groups of people that meet regularly for accountability, community, and encouragement. We have many in-person and online opportunities available. To view the group options or to sign up, go to salemcovenant.org slash smallgroups. Everything we do here at Salem is only possible by your support. If you'd like to support our ministry financially, you can do so at our website at salemcovenant.org or you can download the Church Center app. Thanks again for joining us this morning. If you appreciated this morning's message, take the time to connect with us and we'll help you get equipped so that together we can encounter God and extend the gospel to the world. All right, here we go. Grab your Bible, lean forward, and join us. Good morning, Salem. Good morning to those that are online as well. Um, that last video had, it, it kind of ended like church is home. And like here at Salem, that's something that we really try to emphasize. Like, hey, this is your home. This is, we are all family here at Salem. So today we have quite a few, um, some new faces, which is awesome. So actually, it's been a while since we've done it. If we could have like a moment or two, maybe just give an air high five to someone that you think is new or maybe someone that you haven't seen in a while because, you know, Skype and everything like that. And then in about a couple of seconds here, we're going to be having the announcement video. So if you could pay attention to that when that comes on. In case you missed it, here is a quick recap of the events coming up here at Salem. Men's fraternity. Allison, Alice. It's men's fraternity. She can't. Come on, let's not. You let's not me do that. Fella earlier, so. I, I did. But anyways, men's fraternity is going to be on March 9th at 7:30 a.m. 7:30 a.m. Okay, that's pretty early, but we believe you can do it. We are going through the book Loyal. Uh, Jim Johnson has picked up a few extra copies, so if you can't get your hands on one right away, uh, go ahead and just uh, talk to him. He'll get you one. Uh, read through the first two chapters in the introduction to be ready to, to uh, discuss. Uh, at Perkins by the Mall, uh, and look what this guy's having. I hope none of you order something as healthy. No, I'm just kidding. You can order anything you want. It's Perkins, anytime, <laughs> man. So, men's fraternity, come on up. Hey, what if what if they don't read through both chapters and the introduction? Yeah, it's all right. No judgment. Uh, if you can't read through it, we still want you there. We still want you to come, and we'll figure out a way to get everyone caught up together. So, 7.30 a.m., March 9th, Perkins. Stephen's ministry. Stephen has a ministry? <laughs> no. 
Not our Stephen. Not Stephen. Different Stephen. Different Stephen. Okay, sorry. All right. Stephen Ministry is looking for caregivers. So if you're interested in helping someone out who's going through a difficult time, uh, please see Nancy Sundstrom at the Welcome Center uh, for more information on that. We here at Salem, our ministries thrive off of volunteers and totally understandable during the COVID season and everything like that. You know, we just haven't had as many, uh, but we're kind of calling out again uh, to just ask for volunteers. If you're interested in helping out here at the church, whether that be the hospitality team, whether that be in kids ministry, we would really appreciate it. Vanessa is looking for just a small commitment from a handful of people. What's, Maybe what's once a, small, a month. Once a month. Once, once a month. For our anchored ministry. Anchored? Our kids ministry. Yeah. So if you are interested in that, please email the church, salem at salemcovenant.org for more information regarding that. Nick, can you believe it's already Easter? Not really. Uh, this year has gone by just so quickly. Remembering last Easter, we had to quickly scramble and do a purely outside online uh, event where that was the first time we, I think we were starting to live stream with different camera angles. And so we had an iPad, I was running back and forth everywhere. It was kind of crazy, uh, but it was fun. So this year, uh, we're just excited to look at promises. And uh, so it starts off, of course, with Palm Sunday, March 28th. And then something happens on Friday. What's it called? Good Friday. It's Good Friday, people. And of course, Easter on the following Sunday. I'm pretty sure 9.30. 9.30, kids, we're gonna have our Easter egg hunt. So be here at the church by 9.30, Easter Sunday. And then at eight o'clock in the morning, we're going to do a online uh, thing that you watch at home before you come to church at 10 o'clock. So we're prepping for that. Um, so stay tuned for more details and just on the timings of everything. But eight o'clock is an online service, 10 o'clock in the church, but we'll live stream it as well. You gonna uh, grab that and put it into a note or you're gonna just continue texting some random person I don't know? <laughs> you do know, it's Chris too. He was asking me if I was gonna be here. I'm like, well, I'll probably still be here recording, so. Ah, uh, yeah, gosh. <sighs> Hi, and welcome to Salem Covenant. <laughs> Easter is on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm not gonna do that. Absolutely. That, that's weird. That's a weird transition. So I'm just gonna say, all right. I'm gonna look at you and then look at the camera. Right. Here we go. Look at you, look at the camera. Look at you, look at the camera. Yeah, no. <laughs> Where am I looking? <laughs> You're looking at the camera because okay. I, I, I'm looking at you. Because I just said the things. Because you just said the things, yeah. Um, okay, Stephen, are you looking at the announcements right now as well? No, no? okay. That's fine. Here. That's fine. <laughs> totally fine. So, can you pay attention to me for a second? No, you can finish what you're finishing. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, finish what you're finishing. Yep, absolutely. There's more important people in this con uh, congregation than me. I know it's hard for me to believe. Uh, it's probably easier for other people to believe though. If you need more information on these events, please go to salemcovenant.org or download the Church Center app. Good morning, Salem Covenant. Why don't you stand with us We are um, just excited to worship together and to encounter God. Um, so let's just take a moment and prepare our hearts. Lord, we want to thank you for your love and your grace for us, Father. We want to come together this morning as a congregation, as a family, and fellowship together in your presence, Lord. We want to glorify you, Lord. Help us to put everything else aside, all distractions, everything that can hinder us from encountering you this morning. Where you're standing right now, just do that. Just say, Lord, I'm here for you. Jesus, it's all about you. Just prepare your heart to worship him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We're here to glorify you, to worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
grace on top of grace. More than I thirst for, more than I'm worth. Grace on top of grace. How sweet the sound once lost, now found. Heaven came down. From my sin and penalty At the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace More than I fast for, more than I work, grace on top of grace. Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. At the cross you took my place, with your grace on top of grace. With your grace on top of grace. Oh. Lies now found, heaven came down, the grace rescue me, oh, how sweet the sound, once lies now found, heaven came down. From my sin and penalty At the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace Hallelujah, I am free From my sin and penalty At the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace with your grace on top of grace With your grace on top of grace Hallelujah! Tell someone they're free Thank you Lord for your grace Thank you Lord that you're the good Father I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many searching for Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
Good morning and welcome. Uh, you may be seated. Again, good morning. I'm Pastor Stephen Osborne. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. What a joy to worship with you this morning. And uh, welcome to all of you that is watching us online. We so appreciate all of your time. And to create some space and time to just be among God's people and to be in His presence. Amen. That is a good thing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. Before we come to the Lord's table this morning, um, I want to just use this time to pray for our congregation. Um, several things to pray for uh, as you maybe reflect on some of the prayer emails that went out this week. Um, we do need to pray for Jan, still struggling with her back. I know she is very uncomfortable and, uh, and in pain. And then also just for her husband, Pete. Um, he probably received some not so good news uh, this week. We're still kind of trying to feel, or there at least, trying to figure out exactly um, the news and steps forward. Um, he will probably go to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester this week. And so we want to just definitely lift them up. Also, you maybe uh, saw the email about Vern Roberts that fell from a ladder. Uh, but in the unfortunate event of falling they discovered um, some other things uh, going on and so quite serious so we want to pray for healing um, for him as well and then mickey um, just uh, told me that her sister passed away and they're heading to grand forks uh, this week so just to lift them up as well so let me just pray for us and then we'll come to the table father god um, what a privilege it is for us to just um, lift each other up. Father, we all go through seasons of challenges, sometimes conflict, um, turmoil, different storms, health. And these moments can feel overwhelming in our lives. And we can rest today with that knowledge that there's the body of Christ coming together, praying. 
And Father, we're not praying just up in the air. We're praying to a Father that years. And thank you that your word reminds us in James that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And so, Father, we want to lift up uh, all of these prayer requests. We lift up this morning, Jan and Pete, Lord. Um, Father, we pray that your spirit will be with them this week as they travel to Rochester. We pray that um, you will really give them good direction for the medical staff on how to move forward. Father, we pray for Vern and his recovery. Father, we pray that you will keep your hand of protection over, over all of them um, and that you will restore. Father, we pray for Mickey and for Wally as they go to Grand Forks this week. We pray for safety as they travel. Um, I pray that your spirit will bring great comfort to their hearts as they grieve. Um, may it be a time of rejoicing even in the midst of grieving as they gather um, with family. So, Father, thank you that we can bring all of these things to you. And I think of, of Angie's email, Lord, about baby Ophelia. Um, I cannot imagine for a little one going through all of those surgeries. Um, and it's just, it's a miracle. And so we give you thanks for what you've already done. And we pray that um, she will continue to recover and heal and to be restored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's uh, uh, such a joy for us to come to the Lord's table this morning. I was pondering on these songs that we were singing. How fitting as we think about grace on top of grace. This table is a table of grace and a table that reminds us that we serve a good, good father. It really is um, a father that loves us so much that he gave his son to die on the cross so that you and I can experience uh, eternal uh, eternity and a hope and a forgiveness of sins. And that's what we celebrate this morning. And so we celebrate what Jesus has done on the cross for us, but we also celebrate his coming again. And so may this be a profound blessing uh, in your life this morning. May you be uh, reminded of God's love and his grace for you. Uh, no matter what you're experiencing this morning. Amen. It is now our sacred privilege to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. All who humbly put their trust in Christ and desire to help that they may lead a holy life, all who are truly sorry for their sins and would be delivered from them, all who walk or all who would walk in love with their neighbors and intend to live the new life following the commandments of God and walking from now on in, the, in His holy ways, are invited to draw near with faith to receive the Holy Sacrament. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table as the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust Him to share the feast He has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with His disciples, He took the bread and blessed it and broke it. And He gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized Him. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you are sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciple. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak, not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because in your frailty and sin you stand in constant need of God's mercy and help. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek God's presence and pray for the Spirit. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. 
For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Just a reminder again this morning, uh, as we come to the Lord's table, you do not need to be a member of uh, Salem Covenant Church to partake um, uh, from uh, communion. Uh, but we do ask that you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That uh, will be just so much more meaningful for you um, as well. And then also, just uh, again, as part of our tradition here at Salem, um, after the end of the service, we will take up a, a love um, offering, and that will go to some of the uh, local needs within our congregation. So if you can help with that, we will really appreciate it. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you would still our minds and quiet our hearts as we approach this communion table today. We ask that you would draw each one of us into an ever closer fellowship with yourself as we partake together of the bread and juice in grateful remembrance of what you did for each one of us on Calvary's cross. Let's take a moment to just uh, prepare our own heart. The body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. If you'd bow your heads and pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion, and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey. Her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is a bitter gale, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my son, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to the path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others, your dignity to be one who is cruel, lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you'll groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors, and I was soon in serious trouble. 
in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow into the streets and your streams of water in the public squares? Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed. May you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Why my son be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. The evil deeds of wicked ensnare them. The cords of sin hold them fast. For lack of discipline, they will die. Let us stray by their own great folly. What a joy to share from God's Word again this morning. If you're visiting or maybe watching for the first time, we are working through the book of Proverbs. And I want to encourage you to um, keep Proverbs chapter 5 open as we um, work through that chapter. Uh, with a very important uh, message this morning. I said a little bit maybe more mature content. Uh, some of you might have to send your husbands to anchor as well if it gets too uncomfortable in here. I will do my best to behave, um, but I want to be authentic to this passage as well and really share with you the weight of this particular passage um, but, uh, and, not, and hopefully not make it too uncomfortable for you, but I think that there's a, a great message in there for us. And again, uh, if I'm new to you, I'm Pastor Stephen Osborne, the lead pastor here. And just to uh, quick in introduce you as well, uh, Jesse is our uh, intern. Um, and so just so great, uh, appreciate our team. Well, I want to sh start off with two stories. Uh, I'm grateful that my wife isn't here, and she'll probably appreciate for not being in here as well in, in this moment as I share this story. And it's not embarrassing her, it's, it's more on me. Um, I share this maybe two weeks with our Grace group as well. Uh, several years ago, <clears throat> uh, I had the opportunity to preach in, in our previous church. Our lead pastor was on vacation, and I was also leading communion in that moment and Vanessa was the worship leader so Vanessa is on the stage and just as what you experienced this morning with Chris to be on stage and is kind of just playing in the background and as we get ready to come to the Lord's table um, then Friday night we were watching a movie and Vanessa is very sensitive with movies um, and can really upset her pretty quickly with, with some of the stuff that you can sometimes see in our culture. And there was a particular scene that really got her so mad and frustrated. And so in our communion time, I'm trying to share about this experience. And so Vanessa standing there, I'm leading communion, this very serious, intense moment. And I want to say of what Vanessa experienced in the movies, I was going to say, uh, that sometimes movies can make her hot under the collar. I don't know what I said, but I said, <laughs> makes her hot under the covers. <laughs> now, uh, our congregation was well behaved. They didn't do what you just did. Uh, so it is, it is quiet in that moment. And... Um, you know, I just keep preaching and teaching, and, but in that moment, there's somebody that just couldn't hold their laughter anymore in the back, and they, it's like, ha, ha, I mean, it was, so I knew what I just did, at, and it's like, man, I'm not going to hide this moment, and I think we probably just had communion, I said, well, have a good afternoon, because, you know, I wasn't going to recover after that. Um... So it might get a little hot under the covers today in our conversation, but it will be a good conversation. Let me share with you one more story, <laughs> kind of a fun story. Don't tell Vanessa I shared that story. A father asked his son, age 10, if he knew about the birds and the bees. 
I don't want to know, the child said, bursting into tears. Father asked son, what was wrong? His son cried out, Dad, at, at age six, I got it. There's no, I got the no, there's no Santa speech. At age seven, I got that there's no Easter bunny speech. Then at age eight, you hit me with there's no two fairy speech. And now you're ready to give me there's no sex speech. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> well, that is not the case for this morning. Um, as we talk about this topic, the reality is, and to be very honest with you, I think in our more traditional churches, um, it is an uncomfortable topic to talk about sex in church. Amen? I'm assuming this might be my last amen for the morning <laughs> as well as we wrestle through this passage and this topic. But let's look at Proverbs chapter 5, and I want to just, for us to pause here at verse 1. It says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight. It's a great way to start this. You see this image of Solomon um, investing, speaking to his son. And he is telling him, he says, my son, really pay attention because this is a serious moment. I've got some observations about life that I want to speak to you. And it's kind of that birds and bee conversation. Maybe it's not about the biological part as we think about sex, but it is more about the spiritual implications and things that Solomon has experienced and some of his observations. And so he really wants his, his son to, to pay attention because he understands the value and the importance of this topic. My title for this morning is that this particular thing can cost you your legacy, and, and we'll get back to, to that. Now, I want to start off maybe on the positive side for us. I mean, all of this is positive. There's maybe some warnings in here. Um, but as we look at this in verse 1, he says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. And a couple of things as we build up, we're going to jump to verse 18, then we're going to come back. But let me just say this as we talk about this topic on sex. Sex is not Satan's creation. Hollywood and media and music will sometimes create that image and that culture as we think about this. But it is not Satan's creation. Satan is doing everything possible to disconnect sexuality from God's um, intended purpose. James reminds us that every good and perfect God or gift is from, is from God. And sex is a gift. And it is from God. One of the things that I uh, maybe was a little bit frustrated with later in my life as, as I became a more mature Christian, as I think back about my uh, upbringing in the church, I grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church, and I can honestly say this conversation probably would never would have happened growing up. I never heard them talk about sex in church. The reality is so many times as a, as a kid, as a teenager, this conversation was negative. Stay away. Don't talk about it. Um, so really a negative image. And I think it is still true a lot of times the way that we handle this sensitive topic. And there's no uh, greater responsibility for us as parents to have meaningful conversation with our kids around this topic and to, to make it important to say it is a gift from God within context of marriage, right? Um, it is beautiful 
because we can go, ooh, yuck. And I still want Haley to think, ooh, yuck, at this point. That's my daughter, if you don't know. She's 12, turning 13. Uh, but it is. I don't want her to look at this topic and go, ooh, yuck. But she has to understand the beauty of this in context and within the boundaries of marriage and God's intention around it. And guess what? They will not hear this particular area on the beauty of God in school. Just think about the stuff that you heard in school. Okay, Don't share because most of us will pass out probably on some of the stuff you have heard. I did. I remember about sixth grade. I was sixth grade. My mom, my dad wasn't even brave enough. My mom gave me a book, What Boys Want to Know. Okay, That was the extent of my sex talk. Because it was awkward, comfortable. Nobody had that really conversation. And the reality is, everything I read in that book, there was a couple of fun pictures in there. And pieces like, whoa, wow. Well, okay. Uh, but most of the stuff and the twisted part of that I already heard at school. So who do you want your, who do you want to educate your child? Another 12-year-old? or you and God's word. And you can lay a beautiful foundation about the promises of God. So don't leave, even though it's awkward, don't leave this topic for their friends. Be the parent, step up, it's awkward, uncomfortable, but figure it out. Because it's too important not to talk about it because Satan will do everything in his abilities to twist this truth. All right? Just listen to music, watch movies, and you'll see what I mean. God is the author and inventor of sex and sexual desires. When we look at Genesis... Um, Chapter 1 says, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female he created them and god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply it is in this context that i believe that god gives us um, sexual desires so that we can go and multiply it's not going to help if you look at your spouse and go you there needs to be a sexual desire to multiply. Some of you are laughing. I don't want to know. But it's, it's a gift from God. Now, again, I want to remind you of the wisdom. It says, my son, pay attention. Salem, family, all of you watching online, pay attention. Verse 18. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in your wife of your youth. Now, I want you to highlight rejoice. The Hebrew word for rejoice there means this. It means two things, um, kind of a definition there, or not definition, but kind of meaning in the Hebrew. It means brighten up and enjoy. Now, Solomon's investing in his son says, we as married couples need to enjoy and brighten up our spouses. Is that a good thing? It is. This message this morning is for everyone that is not married, for everyone that is married, for everyone that wants to get married, for anybody that's been through a divorce, okay, who did I exclude? Nobody, okay, good. 
okay? I want you to know that no matter where you are at in your relationship, getting married, if you've been married for 40, 50 years, doesn't matter, it is important and with this wisdom from Solomon to say, we have to enjoy our spouses. Are you still enjoying your spouse? Are you still brightening up their lives? That is what we are called to do. Amen? Don't let your marriage become such a drag and a pain and hard work that you don't enjoy it anymore and that you are not a joy to your spouse. It is supposed to be a beautiful thing and there is some hard work in it. There's a, a price that we constantly have to pay. We constantly have to, to uh, uh, come against our own selfishness in marriage, to put the other person above ourselves. That is hard work. But make your spouse a priority. Enjoy them. Now, I have to say, this can be sometimes really difficult, right? And we go through those seasons in life where life is so busy and it just doesn't feel like we're, we're connecting well. But guess what? That is the reality of marriage. I don't know of too many marriages where for 50 years it's just smooth sailing all the time. We go through hard ships but you, or hard times. You have to just fight through it. Fight through it. Work through it. Be intentional about it so that you can get to that place um, where you enjoy each other again. Don't just wake up in the morning and feel like, man, this is kind of a stranger that I'm waking up next to. Be intentional. For those of you that are not married, I want to encourage you. Uh, there was a... Um, a year that I, before I met Vanessa, that I fasted relationships because I was in re relationships since about seventh grade, probably straight through. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> don't know what my parents were thinking. Um, but the year before I met Vanessa, I, I really went on my knees. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm about to graduate from college. I'm probably gonna end up in ministry. I want to make wise decisions. And so I took a year of just fasting relationships and spent time with God. I want to encourage you, if you're seeking, you're praying about your future spouse, take that serious. Make that commitment even today to say, I'm going to enjoy them. And I will be 100% committed to brighten up their life to throw myself fully and give myself fully to them. Now, I know, I know that we sometimes fail in this moment. This morning is not about, about shaming, it is about stepping up and fixing things. Have honest, difficult conversation if things are not going well with you and your spouse. If you've lost this passion and you're not enjoying each other, do whatever you got to do. If you need to seek counsel, go for it. Do it. Because the consequences of you not doing it, it is so much more expensive and so much more painful. So fix it now. Today, you and I have a new day, new opportunity to start fresh. And God is the God of new beginnings. He says, as we continue there, verse 19, A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated 
with her love. Now, I can imagine this conversation <laughs> with Solomon and his son. It's like getting to this whole breast piece, and it's like, okay, Dad, I was way too much information, right? Um, Solomon is very intentional with his words. When you look at the Hebrew, you see that he's very graphic and it is very sexual because he wants to drill into his son and I believe in our lives as well is to talk about this intimacy that needs to happen at home. Now, we all know, for some of you that's maybe you know, new in marriage um, uh, or thinking about marriage, marriage is not built upon sex. I know some of you are like, ah, dang it, wait to ruin. I might as well just told you Santa Claus isn't real, right? <laughs> But if this peace is not healthy, it will have a profound impact in your marriage. So intimacy is from God. And Solomon is saying, really appreciate your wife. Make sure that this aspect of your marriage is healthy. Now, how real do I want to get here? Okay, I'm going to go for it. Don't be mad. I'm not trying to offend anybody. As we think about biology, women and men are yeah, different. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Okay, wonderful service. See you next week. <laughs> Are wired very differently sexually. Okay, that's how God wired us. Ask Him why, okay? Not me. All I know, and I think this is true for most men, when it comes to sexual intimacy, um, it doesn't take much for us to get to a place of intimacy, right? Um, I think, that's most men. What I have learned over the years, women are not wired that way. <laughs> I'm thinking of my poor wife. What can I say? What can I? <laughs> well, I just need to be quiet. Okay, let me say this. Um, what I do and say in the morning counts later at night. Because we're wired differently. With that being said, I need to be intentional with flowers. I need to be intentional about touching, writing poems, playing on my guitar. It's not a matter of Vanessa or women being ready like men. So with that being said, it, is, it takes work. And I think it is easy for us to get lazy in this area as well. Maybe when you're on honeymoon and two years into your marriage, that's still all fun, or five years into marriage, or 20 years into marriage. But maybe 25 years, it maybe takes a little bit more work. But it is worth the investment. And I do think that over you, you know, after you've maybe been married for a long time, you understand that that piece maybe is not as important anymore. And maybe the, the foundational aspect looks a little different, right? But it is still important. 
it is still important because it creates a oneness between us. And I think that there's an intimacy and a worship that happens between husband and wife in that moment. It is such a sweet, beautiful picture, even of our relationship and our oneness with God. And so I don't want to say this morning, yeah, just forget about that piece. It is work. Be intentional about it. And that's why I believe that Solomon is, is telling his sons, like, pay attention to this area. Don't grow cold. Don't get lazy. Work on your sexual intimacy with your wife or with your husband because it is worth it. It is worth it. Your spouse is worth it. That intimacy, creating those moments, it will be a blessing. I'm grateful that wasn't Vanessa coming in. <laughs> All right. Go back. I want to just, verse 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight. I don't want you to miss these words, okay? Maybe on the negative side here, just looking at verse 3 for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her excuse me and her speech is smoother than oil some studies research in a study titled america's generation gap in extramarital affairs 20 percent of older couples noted that they had cheated during their marriage most people who, had, who cheat have been married for 20 to 30 years and are between the ages of 50 and 60. As I was reading this, this is not a condemnation, but I was thinking how sad this is. When you have invested all of those years in your marriage and now for a moment of weakness and temptation, you're willing to sacrifice all of that time. That broke my heart. Okay. According to the American Psychological Association, um, infidelity in the United States accounted for 20 to 40 percent of divorces. So, I don't know what that total number will look like in the U.S., but um, I think we all know that it is a challenge. Um, and sexual sin will destroy a family. And we have seen over the years, we have seen this year, we've seen last year, um, story after story after story of sexual sins destroying people's reputations and their legacies. Um, and I don't want that to happen to any of us. Now, uh, let me say this. The consequences of adultery is usually divorce, regret, shame, and embarrassment. There's a lot of embarrassment and shame when you walk through something like this and like i said your legacy might never recover if you fall in this trap and the reality is when we look at this at just this description in, in verse 3 it says for the lips of an adulterous woman or man um, drips with honey and their speech is smoother than oil and then he continues to say in verse 8 he says, keep to a path far from her. Do not go near to the door of her house. Now, I want to say this. Do not flirt with sexual temptation. Solomon's got it absolutely 100% accurately to say 
stay far away from that path. It will look good in that moment. And, and we know, so according to scripture, it says that sin is good for a season. But boy, that season is usually pretty short. And the consequences of that is going to be very long. So stay away. If you're watching online and if you are um, playing around with pornography, uh, maybe there's some flirting going on at the workplace. Um, maybe there's some texting. That is flirting with the wrong thing. It will cost you. And you need, we need to repent today. It is not something that as a church and as believers that we can mess around with. The cost and the price is too expensive. Today is not about guilt and shame like I shared before. We have all probably, most of us, um, slipped up in this area. We probably all have we've got a bit of experience and maybe some things that we're not proud of if we really open up that closet, right? And you need to have conversation with God about that. But I want to ask you for today. How is your marriage doing? Are you still intentional about your legacy? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind as a husband, as a grandfather, as a dad? Okay? To keep that legacy intact, you have to run from this lifestyle. You cannot play around, you cannot fool around in this area. And this counts for what you're watching online as well. I get so frustrated. Again, our church is not a church where we're going to always tell you what we're against. And it's like, don't do this, and don't do that. I hate preaching about that. But I get frustrated when I talk to Christians and they tell me some of the stuff that they're watching online. And I said, as a believer and with the Holy Spirit inside of you, how can you have the conviction to watch some of the stuff that you're watching where there is sexual rape and abuse and nudity. Something is a disconnection in your life. You are not listening to the Holy Spirit in that moment. And in that moment, you need to turn the TV off. If you hear the Holy Spirit and you feel that awkwardness and there's a conviction that is happening in your life, you turn that TV off and you run from that path because her words might be like honey. But guess what? In that moment, if you allow that door to open up, it can lead to more dangerous things in your life where the price might be way more dangerous for what you are experiencing in just by watching TV. So it's just a warning. It's just a warning. Let's be a church and people that is pure. Now, we don't get it always right. I, I agree, right? And sometimes things slip in. There's grace. But because I want to see you, your legacy be intact for years to come, that's why we have this conversation. Why Solomon is having this conversation with his son. The frustrating part for me looking at this is knowing the things that Solomon did. This is the area that he lacked wisdom. He lacked wisdom in the application piece of it. He had the, the intellectual piece um, to warn his son. Um, but he didn't know how to apply it. And we need to apply these truths. We can't just sit here on a Sunday morning in the pew and say, yes, pastor, preach it, preach it. And then we don't apply it. Apply it. 
make it a priority. Your legacy and your testimony is way too important to lose it for a moment of pleasure. Just look at this warning in uh, verse 4b. Sharp as a double-edged sword. If you mess around in this area, it will rip you apart. I don't see anybody getting away with this stuff. You will not get away. It will rip you apart. Verse 12. You will say how I hated discipline. How my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors. And I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Here is our moment when we sit into teachings and when we're sitting in church, it's an opportunity to listen to God's word and say, I am going to apply it. These cannot be moments where we just listen and we don't listen. We need to take it to heart. He says, otherwise, if we harden our hearts and we rebel, you're going to soon find yourself in trouble. Um, I'll close with this story. This is uh, pretty personal. I don't know that I have shared really this part of my life too often, maybe here and there. Um, I don't remember much, but it was, uh, I was maybe three or four or five years old that my parents got a divorce. Um, and I know maybe some of the stories now that I know that they were not faithful in their marriage. And I remember for a short period of time, I can't remember how long they were divorced, maybe a year, maybe less than a year. But I remember some dating and some things and you just, it just, it, it so bothered me as a kid at that age and some of the things that I saw. But praise the Lord, later on my parents got remarried and I got to be at their second wedding. I wasn't there at their first one. <laughs> and you know, it is something I want to share with you today. As we think about sexual sin, and maybe some areas that we, we have missed it. God is a God that can restore at that, and that wants to restore. So even if you're sitting here this morning and you go like, man, I have messed up in some of these areas in my life. You know what is important this morning? It is to have that heart of David and to fall on your face before him and to say, God, I, I've messed up. And maybe even right now, if you're, if you're flirting with some things, sexual sin, and you know you should not be flirting in this area, repent. Deal with that. Bring it to God. Because your legacy is so much more important. And the testimony and what God wants to do with your life. And if there's an area and you have asked him for forgiveness and you have repented, here's the, my words of advice to you. Don't let Satan take you back to those lies and your past because God has forgiven you. You are set free from those things in your past. Experience God's grace this morning in your life you do not have to carry that burden anymore make it part of your testimony and your story of hope because we all have messed up but it's about 
What about the now? What about the now? Okay? Walk this thing out. Experience God's grace in your life and His, His restoration. He died on that cross for us so that you and I can hope in all areas. Don't let the enemy bully you this morning with guilt and shame. All right? There's no reason. The Lord wants to lift you up. The Lord wants to make your marriage holy and a trophy and a testimony for His kingdom. As we see things happening in our communities, now we can be a godly example because this world needs godly examples. And I want to see your legacy stay intact. I want to see your testimony stay intact. We need to encourage one another. I'll close with this one last thing here. My challenge to you is this. Find good friends, accountability partners that will speak truth into your life, that will keep you accountable, that when they see you're doing stuff that might, that might not bring honor to your family, that those friends will speak into your life and to say, you are busy playing with fire. There's a place for fire. That fire is in the, in the fire ring, in the fireplace, right? That's comfy, that's cozy. Let's do s'mores. Anything outside of that fire pit is dangerous. It will bring destruction. It will burn down your house. And I want people that will have honest conversations, say, Stephen, let's rein in that fire. Let's keep it in the fire pit so that we don't burn down the house. Can I hear amen? You survived the sex talk. Way to go. I want to pray for us. I want you to, if you have your husband or your wife next to you, I want you to take her hand. I do mean that. If you're not married, just look for somebody else that's not married and hold their hand quickly. <laughs> so I claim you this morning. Just kidding. And I want to pray for our marriages this morning. Father God, thank you for this beautiful word. Father, thank you for the the beautiful marriages we have in this congregation. And Father, I pray that you will protect them. Father, I pray for all of those that are watching online this morning. I pray that you will protect them. Father, help us this morning in our marriages to enjoy and to build up and to brighten up our spouses. Father, it is so easy to take them for granted. Help us not to do that. Give us so much wisdom, Lord, as we invest and as we enjoy each other. Father, will you come and restore maybe even some marriages this morning that is really struggling and it feels like you've hit a wall? If you're maybe watching online and you feel like there's, there's no hope, let me remind you that there's, we serve the God of the impossible. But it will be hard work. Seek help. Go on your knees. God can restore. And so, Lord, I pray for those marriages that are really in trouble. Will you come and restore? Will you um, put the right people in their life and their path to 
to speak wisdom into their marriages. Father, I pray that you will, will protect every marriage watching online or sitting here this morning from the temptation of sin, sexual sin, other distractions. Father, may we never hear of another person getting divorced or feel like that's you know, the last resort. Just protect. Protect the legacies. Father, I pray especially this morning for our fathers, our dads. Lord, will you protect their legacy as godly husbands and as godly fathers, as godly grandfathers. Don't let us slip, Lord. I give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. Uh, why don't you stand with us as we close the service with the final song. For God so loved, 
Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that we could gather together and learn more about you and worship together in your presence. Lord, I thank you for the word that Pastor Stephen shared this morning. Father, we want to thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you will open our eyes and our ears to see the good gifts you've given us and close our eyes and our ears to the lies and the perverseness of the devil. Father, I pray that you use everything in our lives to show us how much you love us and teach us how to love each other in that same way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone. Go in peace. All right, thanks for joining us. Let us know what you thought by sending an email to salem at salemcovenant.org. And don't forget to stay up to date with all Salem's activities at salemcovenant.org. Hope to see you soon.